Cardiff City, the Bluebirds. Look, heading into the season, basically nobody gave the Welsh side a chance of surviving relegation in the Premier League, myself included. And whilst those people were correct, I'll be damned if Cardiff don't deserve credit for putting up one heck of a fight. However, the reality now is that Cardiff have been relegated. They are joining Fulham and Huddersfield back down in the championship. But today, we aim to change that. Today, we will be taking over Cardiff and trying to change their fortunes for this season and beyond. Today, we rebuild Cardiff City. G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. Welcome to a highly sought after, a highly requested rebuild. It is going to be for the Bluebirds. It is going to be Cardiff City. I mean, we've had some pretty difficult relegation fights in our time as manager, as Mr. Rebuild, but today's challenge probably gonna prove to be a whole nother level of relegation survival. Basically, what I'm trying to say is Cardiff a shite. But if you guys do go on to enjoy today's rebuild with Cardiff City, make sure you leave a like on the video and also make sure if you are new around here, that you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. For those of you who have not seen a rebuilding challenge video yet, here are the rules. So the main objective of this is to take a team to the Champions League final. We will be simulating every single game up until the Champions League final, which we will play ourselves. We can make whatever transfers we like Realistic, unrealistic, it does not matter. There's a big focus on the transfer window, only showing players that we sign. And finally, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. Let's get into the rebuild. So this is what our starting 11 looks like for season number one. Quite obviously, there is a lot of business to be done. I've done a little bit of research into the squad like I always do for a rebuild, a bit of planning. And there's literally not one player in this squad that has decent potential and is a notable in my opinion. So basically the entire squad's gonna be gone by the time we win the Champions League final. At least that's the goal, but this season, I want to improve in the left back spot, the right back spot, the left mid spot, and the striker spot. So, let's get into the transfer business and, yeah, make kind of a half-decent side. <laughs> we are going to start things off with a signing. It is Ben Chilwell, the left back, coming across from Leicester City for 14.2 million pounds. We improved at the left back and now we improve at the right back. It is Lucas Klosterman coming across from Leipzig, 13 million pounds, another solid addition to our back line. And a player departure here as we sell Aaron Gunnison to Tulu for two million pounds. And another player departure here as we sell Matthew Connolly to Southampton for I believe one million pounds. Yeah, just over one million pounds. Our third addition to the squad is going to be on the the left hand side of the midfield it is an Englishman with a lot of talents it is Adamola Lookman the left midfielder joins us from Everton for 14 million pounds so a strong start to life in charge of Cardiff Chilwell Klosterman and Lookman all into the club Gunnison and Connolly out of the club this is what the starting 11 looks like I mean our goal is to avoid relegation I don't know if we're there at the moment, but we will see how we're trucking along on the 1st of January. It is no surprise to see us in the midst of the relegation battle. We are one point out of it with Newcastle, Fulham, Southampton and Brighton all behind us. Brighton are in a really tough spot, but we need to just focus on ourselves. And the big thing there, nine draws. We convert a couple of those into wins and we will survive relegation. So it's going to be a massive second half of the season for us. At the other end of the table, Tottenham are five points clear. And it really seems like a two horse race between Tottenham and Chelsea for the title. And we have made a player departure here. We have sold Junior Hoylet to Besiktas for 6.5 million pounds. A little fun fact for you guys. Junior Hoylet has been relegated at every Premier League club he played for. He was relegated with Blackburn in 2011-12, relegated with QPR in 2012-13 and 2014-15, and of course relegated this season with Cardiff City. So he's a bad luck charm, we're getting rid of him. And we've sold another player to a Turkish club. This time it is 
Joe Bennett to Fenerbahce for 2.4 million pounds. And we've sold Danny Ward to Chapecoense for 780,000 pounds. And on transfer deadline day, we have signed a new right midfielder. It is Oscar Melendo. The Spaniard joins us from Espanol for 13 million pounds. Melendo in, Hoyle it out, Bennett out, Ward out. Our squad has gone up another level here and hopefully that's the signing that gets us over the edge and sees us secure Premier League survival for a second season. We'll check in at the end of season one. Get in there, lads. We have survived the relegation fight on bloody goal difference. Our defense has helped us stay up. It must have only been a goal or two between us and Newcastle, but we have survived in the Premier League. It is Newcastle, Southampton, and Brighton all going down. Scrolling up the table, and it was Arsenal. Wow, Arsenal have come back from nowhere to win the Premier League title this season. Spurs in second, City in third. But I could care less about the top of the table. I'm just happy we survived relegation. Checking out the other tournaments, Manchester United did win the FA Cup. Liverpool won the Carabao Cup. Juventus won the Champions League over Barcelona. And Chelsea took down Tottenham on penalties to win the Europa League final. So we had one goal for season one. That was Premier League survival. We have done it only just, but we have done it nonetheless. So let's crack on season two with Cardiff City. Hopefully it's not a case of second season syndrome. A center back signing here to kick off our second season. It is Filip Benkovic, the Croatian center back joining from Leicester for 14.4 million pounds. And another addition to our side here. This time it is in the central part of the midfield. It is Florian Newhouse coming across from Borussia Mönchengladbach for 19.9 million pounds. And we have sold Gary Medine to Konyaspor for 900, sorry, for 1 million pounds. So 50,000 pounds over his market value. And Lee Tomlin has been sold to San for 840,000 pounds. Two more player departures here as we sell Lee Peltier to Bristol City and we have sold Bruno Aculi Manga to Independiente for three and a half million pounds. And a deadline day player departure here as Omar Bogle is off to Bayer for 930,000 pounds. So two players in, Benkovic and Newhouse, and then we just got rid of a bunch of, not smaller players, but players that really we don't need and we're just sitting around the club. So our starting 11 is looking all right. Definitely a lot of room to improve. Probably want to make a signing in January as well, but I'm going to do some research now as we simulate to the 1st of January. All right, so here we are on the 1st of January, and it's a good sign because we are sitting mid-table, but there is plenty of potential for us to go down. Middlesbrough and Sheffield Wednesday struggling big time. Huddersfield in a position where they can get out of the relegation zone. I feel like, yeah, there's only eight points between us and Huddersfield, so everything could change if we play like crap. Top of the table right now is Bournemouth. What? Bournemouth are leading the Premier League at the moment on 42 points. Fair play to Eddie Howe, but we're focused on ourselves. Plenty of room to go up and plenty of room to go down. So we have brought in a new center back here in the January transfer window. It is one Foyf from Tottenham. The Argentine joins us for just 10.7 million pounds, which I'm pretty happy with. Welcome to Cardiff City. So the signing of Juan Foyf is a good one. It gets us into the center back position. We've got an upgrade, but we've also got a player now that can grow along with the squad, which we didn't have with Morrison. So this is the starting lineup. Let's see how season two finishes. Will we be in the relegation battle? Will we be mid-table? Or maybe even, just maybe, will we be fighting for European football? Oh, shit. We've had a shocking second half of the season. And we've only finished one point out of the relegation zone. Oh, my. That is, that is not good at all. It's Huddersfield, Sheffield Wednesday, and Middlesbrough going down. But, my God, that could have quite easily been us. That was, that's worrying. I was hoping maybe we could be a top five, top six sort of side. Instead, we finished one point out of the relegation zone. 
Man City do win the league ahead of Liverpool. Maybe that's what's coming up in the next week or so. And then Arsenal and Wolves round out the top four. Liverpool did win the FA Cup over Man City, however. Newcastle won the Carabao Cup over Man City. Inter Milan take down Liverpool to win the Champions League final on penalties. And Schalke took down Real Betis on penalties in the Europa League final. So season two definitely didn't turn out how I expected it to. Second season syndrome almost caught up to us and got us relegated, but we need to crack on next season and make sure we don't finish in the relegation fight again. Our third season begins with a player sale. It is Neil Etheridge. He was a bit of a hero for Cardiff this season, but the Filipino, the Filipino goalkeeper, is headed to Frankfurt for 5.2 million pounds. And we're gonna splash the cash on a new goalkeeper, a new number one. It is Thomas Strakosha. The Albanian goalkeeper joins us from Lazio for 40 million pounds. That is going to be a, he'll probably stay here for the remainder of the rebuild. What a pickup. Also, Luka Modric went back to Spurs. Fun fact. We are gonna make a free agent signing here as well. This guy looks like an absolute weapon. It is Sol Mas Wame. He is a Spanish center midfielder that can play center back, center defensive midfielder. We have scouted him, 19 years of age, 72 rated. He joins us as a free agent. Welcome to Cardiff City. This guy looks like a gun. I wonder whose regen he is. And another player departure here, Kadeem Harris off to Stoke City for 1.7 million pounds. And a pretty significant player departure here. We have sold one of our starting 11 players. It is Joe Rawls off to Hoffenheim for 12.7 million pounds. And there it is, a huge deadline day pickup. We upgrade our central midfield spot again. Someone I don't think I have ever signed. It is Christopher Nkunku. He signs from Lazio, formerly of PSG, but he went to Lazio in this save. And now to Cardiff City for 23 0.4 million pounds. Welcome, mate. So a pretty busy transfer window here. Strakosha, Maswame, and Nkunku into the club. Etheridge, Harris, and Rawls out of the club. Our squad's gone up another level. Clearly, the striker role is where we need to improve next time. But I would like to think, especially with Strakosha coming in, that we are going to be well out of the relegation battle this year. Relegation battle? Sorry, never heard of it. We are sitting in third. And this is where we plan to stay. It would be nice if we could get Champions League football. I mean, looking at that, like there's teams. If we lose one game, we could be all the way down in seventh. So I'm not holding my horses. But yeah, we're definitely not in the relegation battle right now. Brighton on 19 points. So we're double the total of Brighton, Palace and Villa. So not even concerned about that bottom half of the table. Just hopeful we can stay up in and around the mix of the top four. And a bit of a change of pace. No business done in this transfer window. We have no money in the club basically, but our squad continues to grow. Very interested to see how this season ends. All right, so we've kind of done what we did last season just on a lesser scale. We've gone from third down to 10th, a mid-table finish, exactly what I would have taken coming into the season, but disappointing because we knew where we were at the halfway point. Spurs have won the league three points ahead of Wolves. Next season, our goal surely has to be to climb up into European contention, whether that's Europa League or Champions League. But we finish in 10th, and the three sides relegated are Aston Villa, Crystal Palace, and Bournemouth. Tottenham did win the FA Cup 2-1 over Manchester City. Oh shit, we've won the Carabao Cup. 2-0 over Southampton. So I think that means that we have qualified for the Europa League next season. Get in there. Our first piece of silverware with Cardiff. Atletico Madrid finally take down Real Madrid in the Champions League final. And Borussia Dortmund take down AC Milan to win the Europa League. Also, a moment of respect to Sol Bamba, who is retiring at the end of this season. He's been a good servant for the club, but he's not going to be appearing anymore in the rebuild. So season three has turned out to be a very good one. Europa League qualification, I believe, in season four. Let's see how deep we can go. Title of your sex tape. Anyways, season four. Let's crack on.
Jalkin Correa is going to be the opening signing for season number four. We have signed the Argentine from Lazio for 41.7 million pounds. He will be one of our new strikers. Very excited to get him in. And we have sold the Danish striker Kenneth Zahor to Galatasaray for 5.9 million pounds. I want to start to build out a young core of players that are free agents and regens that can grow up as the save grows up and replace the dud players we have now. So two of them have signed. The first one is Pedro Jose Ribeiro Diaz a left midfielder from Portugal. Looks all right, 65 rated, age 18. Could grow into somebody quite good. But there's two that I'm quite excited about. This guy here, Joris Bernard, who hopefully signs. But David Jefferson Augusto, the left back joining us here. He looks quite tall. Very excited to have him and see how he grows, but hopefully Bernard accepts as well. And there it is, Joris Bernard, Joris Bernard, the Frenchman signing here. 68 rated, age 19. Hopefully he grows into somebody quite decent, I hope at least. And we have accepted another free agent regen signing. It honestly baffles me how it took this long for somebody to pick up this guy. Diego Nathan Araujo Martins. Let's just call him Diego Martins. 79 rated, 20 years of age, a defensive midfielder from Brazil. What a find. And we have sold Luke the Moor here to FC Sion for £760,000. So a pretty stacked transfer window again. Correa, Augusto, Ribeiro, Diaz, Bernard, Martins, all these players. £41.7 million pounds worth of players. And then Zahor and De Moor out of the club. This is what the starting 11 looks like. And slowly but surely starting to build up our bench and reserves. Definitely going to be a process given how, for lack of a better term, dead wood this Cardiff squad is. So, interested to see how we go this season. Hopefully make a push for top four if we're lucky. I'll check in with you guys on the 1st of January. Oh yes, we are first in the Premier League. How bloody good is that? Four points ahead of Everton, but most importantly, we are nine points ahead of Manchester United. We need to make sure we're top four this season. We want to get a crack on in the Champions League next season onwards. So first position is a perfect start. Scrolling down the table, the teams in strife are Leicester, West Ham, and Huddersfield. Our first pre-contract signing for this Cardiff City rebuild is a massive one. It is Milan Skriniar joining us from Inter Milan next season. The Slovakian centre-back will sign from Inter Milan on a free transfer. I am so excited for this guy. Our starting 11, our defence going to a whole new level. Welcome in season five, Milan Skriniar. So just the one signing of Skriniar, I say just, I mean like that signing is literally going to change the course of the rebuild. Our side's going to go to a whole another level. It's already growing quite nicely. Very excited to see how we finish this season and how we go in the champion, oh, sorry, the Europa League. So let's get to the end of season four and crack on. Get in there, fellas. We haven't won the Premier League title, but we have qualified for the Champions League in season number five. 22 wins, eight draws, eight losses. We finish seven points behind Liverpool, tied with City equal second, but we finished third. I'll take it. Very happy with that. Scrolling down the table, and it is going to be Middlesbrough, Leeds, and Huddersfield all getting relegated, but we are playing Champions League football next season, and I'm stoked about that. Taking a look around the other tournaments, it is a North London derby in the FA Cup final. Spurs edging out Arsenal in that one. And Everton, they won the Carabao Cup on penalties over Chelsea. Real Madrid take down Manchester City to win the Champions League. Quite interested to see how we go next year in the tournament. And Chelsea, they win the Europa League. Interested to see how we went. So we topped our group undefeated. That's very good. Round of 32. Oh, we lost to Porto on penalties. So we got eliminated in the round of 32. So I couldn't really ask for things to go better this season. Screening are coming in next season as well. Champions League football on the horizon. Let's get it with the Bluebirds. Come on, Cardiff. Season five begins with a new striker signing. We have brought in Luka Jovic from Frankfurt. 67.9 million pounds for the Serbian. He's been linked with Real Madrid in real life. 
but now he's a Carter City man. Two player departures here as we sell Leandro Bacuno to Atletico Monero for six, uh, sorry, 740,000 pounds. And then Greg Cunningham, the Irish left back, headed to Fenerbahce for 2.55 million pounds. And another player departure here as we sell Mendes Lang to Besiktas for 2.75 million pounds. Bobby Reed is leaving the club. He is off to the Bundesliga, off to Mainz for 6.6 .6 million pounds. And a massive defensive signing. Just like that, we have just completely revolutionized our back line. First, we got Skriniar on a free, and now we spend 70 million pounds on Americ Laporte. Maybe I slightly overpaid, but in the long term, I think this is going to be worth it. And it's just taken us to a whole new level. So two massive imports in Jovic and Laporte. Cunningham, Bakuna, Mendes, Lang and Reed all out of the club. And with Skriniar also joining, this is our new look Cardiff City side. Definitely some areas that still need growing, but certain areas like Chilwell with the left back, our two centre backs, Jovic, even Strakosha, are all set for the time being. Now we need to build the squad up around them. Let's go and check out our group for the first time in the Champions League. So we have been placed into Group C of the Champions League and our group mates, our opponents, Valencia, Leipzig and Lokomotiv Moscow. Hopefully we can qualify out of this group, but time will tell. Let's find out how we're going in the Champions League. We've qualified, boys. How good is that? It wasn't super comfortable. It would have come down to the final day, but it is ourselves and Valencia qualifying out of Group C. Group C, Leipzig narrowly behind us, so we're counting our blessings there. Will we count our blessings once again? Let's check out the round of 16 opponent. Ah, okay, it is Juventus. That's tough. I mean, most of the sides remaining are tough, but Juve, I'm interested to see how Cristiano Ronaldo is tracking on at this point. But we are facing them in the round of 16. Good progress in the Premier League as well. The goal every season from here on in has to be top four qualification. Currently, we're top of the Premier League. So it would be nice to win the Premier League this season. Go better than we did last season. But we've got an 11 point buffer ahead of Everton. Arsenal, Southampton, Fulham, and Man City. Wow, that's a very tight top four race. A pre-contract signing here. Ruben Neves coming into the club. Neves is joining us from Wolves in season number six. If we aren't able to uh, win this, this season, if we aren't able to win the Champions League this season, then the Portuguese midfielder will be joining us. Welcome in season six, Ruben Neves. So excited for Ruben Neves to come in next season. But hopefully, I mean, realistically, hopefully, we might not need him. Hopefully, we get past Juve and get past other sides and can complete the rebuild in Season 5. Let's take on Juve right now. A big blow for the first leg as Milan Skriniar is suspended. Luckily, Benkovic is a decent replacement, a decent backup. So he comes in. We have the home leg here. Ronaldo still starting. Not much has changed to this Juve side besides their backline. Christensen, Kanade, and Zinchenko in. Besides that, the starting 11 is how it is. They do take the lead. We equalize, however, and we take the lead. It's all happening here. Within 10 minutes, three goals have been scored. We have a 2-1 advantage, but the bad thing is that Juve have the away goal advantage. We're going to hold on, are we? Yes, we are. We hold on 2-1 up against Juventus. But if they win the second leg 1-0, then they go through. All right, we are 2-1 up, headed into the away leg. A big positive is the arrival, the return of Milan Skrinia. We need to score a goal, though. That is a big, big thing for us. Scoring a goal to kick things off. Ah, shit. Okay, so we definitely need to score a goal now because Juve have tied everything up. They have the away goal advantage as well. It's 2 all. Come on, we need a goal. We need a goal. No. Oh, shit. We need a goal desperately to send this to extra time now. Come on. Correa does just that. We've tied things up. Are we headed to extra time? We are. Come on. If we get an away goal, that's going to be huge for us. Keane puts them up. If we score an equalizer, though, we will win. Far out. We go to extra time against Juventus, but get eliminated here. 
in season five in the round of 16. Three, two on aggregate. No, sorry, four, three on aggregate. Cardiff City fans, it may be doom and gloom for you in real life, but take a look at this and savor it. It is Cardiff City, your club, champions of the English Premier League. We did it by one point, but we have finished top of the Premier League here in season five. And most importantly, that will see us compete in the Champions League again next season. Scrolling down the table, and there's going to be Wolves, Stoke, and Brighton all being relegated. Taking a look around the other tournaments, Chelsea did win the FA Cup 3-1 over Spurs. Manchester United took down Newcastle to win the Carabao Cup 2-0. The good news is we ended up losing to the eventual champions in Juventus, which fills me with a lot of confidence for next season, because if we took them to extra time, and they ended up winning the whole thing, then we're in a pretty good spot next year, especially with Neves coming in and some more big players, I would assume. And it is Manchester United taking down Atletico Madrid and winning the Europa League on penalties. We're getting closer, lads. I can feel it. Sometimes in rebuilds, I get a big sense of occasion, and I feel like season six might be it. Let's make some big signings. Let's go deep in the Champions League. Come on, the Bluebirds. And we are going to start off this sixth season with a new right back signing. 50 million pounds on the dot for the Moroccan Atraf Hakimi. I swear I've stuffed up so many names in today's video. But he is coming across from Manchester United. Welcome to Cardiff City, mate. We're going to make a massive signing to the right wing spot. It is going to be Raheem Sterling coming back to the Premier League. He went from City to Real Madrid, but now he comes to Cardiff for 80 million pounds. Two player departures here. Reese Healy headed to Atletico Mineiro for 1 million pounds, and Ashley Richards headed to Basic Shihia for 490,000 pounds. Two players in, two players out. Hakimi and Sterling upgrade our right-hand side. Richards and Healy out of the club. And I mean, this side is looking real nice. I want Lookman to grow up a little bit more. I want Correa to go up a little bit more and Strakosha. And if we can get all three of those areas firing, then we will be a serious threat of winning the Champions League this season. But speaking of the Champions League, let's go and have a suss out of our group. So our group mates this season, again, a pretty interesting group. We have Roma, Dinamo Kiev and Salzburg. You would think that ourselves and Roma are the two teams to watch, but anything can happen in the Champions League. Let's get to the end of the group stages and see if we can get back to the round of 16. All right, we have gotten out of the group. We finished undefeated, but that doesn't tell the whole story because we have had two wins and four draws. So we've really just got point by point here, but we've easily made it out of the group because Salzburg and Kiev were just absolutely trash. Ourselves and Roma go through the round of 16, and we will be firsting Borussia Dortmund. Okay, Borussia Dortmund in the round of 16, which should be quite an interesting opponent. And at the halfway point, or just over halfway of the Premier League season, things aren't exactly going to plan at the moment. We're sitting in fifth position, and just like the Champions League, we are picking up way too many draws. So we need to get our act together in the second half of the season and make sure we finish top four. A controversial, well, somewhat controversial player departure. We have sold Jalkin Correa to Leverkusen for 41.5 million pounds. I feel like we need another big name striker if we are any chance of winning the Champions League this season. And another one of our strikers goes, it is Callum Patterson making the move to Ligue 1 off to Marseille for 11.7 million pounds. And we have signed ourselves a new striker for a pretty good price as well. It is Anaki Williams coming across from Manchester United. The Spaniard joins us for 40 million pounds below his market value. Good stuff. I wanted to try signing a new backup goalkeeper as well this window, but it was unable to be done. Virtually everyone I wanted to go for that was in like the sort of price range we could afford. They all had contracts expiring, so I could have only got them as a pre-contract pickup, but we want them for now. We wanted them for this season, so that wasn't to be. But we did bring in Anaki Williams. We got rid of Correa and Patterson, and our squad is now looking slightly better. It's a very good squad. 
Let's go and see if we can take down Borussia Dortmund in the round of 16. Here we go, lads. A big blow for the first leg and probably the second leg as well. Milan Skrinia is out through injury, so Benkovic rejoins starting 11. We get a penalty in the first three minutes, which we convert. That is a perfect start to life here. But Dortmund, they have a good side. They have a side that could easily find the back of the net and get them away goals. Players like Sancho, Olmo, Alcacer, Buffal. It's a good looking squad. So my biggest problem is wanting to keep a clean sheet. That's the biggest goal for this first leg. Right now we're on track for it. Neves makes it 2-0. We are in a great position headed into the second leg. All right, here we go, lads. The away leg. Traveling to the Signal Laduna Park. To take on Borussia Dortmund. Still no Skriniar. We have a 2-0 advantage. We need to score an away goal though. We miss a penalty and Kunku could have put us in a great position. Oh, if we had an away goal there. Oh no, and now Dortmund have got themselves back into it. And Kunku does get us an away goal though, which is massive. We are 3-1 up. Dortmund need to score three goals here because they do not have an away goal. And lads, it's looking very, very likely that we are headed through to the quarterfinals. Uh, there it is. We go through to the quarterfinals. One all against Dortmund. Come on, Cardiff. An all Premier League affair here in the quarterfinals. I mean, given the teams that are left on the table, we could have got a bit of luck on our side coming up against the Leverkusen or a Porto or someone like that. But we are facing Manchester United. It's going to be a big challenge. If we get past them, I will be quite confident that we can go all the way, really. We do have the home leg up first here, which I'm not thrilled about. It helped us for the first time against uh, Dortmund, but who does United have? They've still got De Gea. They've got Rashford and Martial, who are beasts. Pogba, Casemiro. We get a goal, though. Skriniar on his return from injury. Picks up a yellow card and then a goal. But Marcus Rashford... Oh, Rashford equalizes for Man United and gets them an away goal, which is not good at all. 20 minutes to go here. They've got Varane as well. I didn't even notice that. Rafael Varane. It's one all at the moment, and that's the way it is going to end. United with a massive away goal. All right, here we go, fellas. It is the second leg here, traveling away to Old Trafford, and our options our game plan is simple we need an away goal united have a big advantage sterling yes the 11th minute that's exactly what we needed we have an away goal neves gets us the second oh my god united need to score three goals now we are looking so good now oh my god we have stepped up so clutch all right no yellow cards no injuries 10 minutes to hold on. We're going through now house or new house off the bench. A 3-0 win. 4-1 on aggregate. Are you kidding me? Once again, we have been matched up. The FIFA God's not on our side in this aspect. We are facing Real Madrid in the Champions League semi-finals here for the right to face either Leverkusen or Napoli in the Champions League final. But we need to focus on taking down Real Madrid. They are such a good side. We all know that, especially in career mode. They always just seem to have a stacked side. Can we get it done? Let's jump into it. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I don't know if you can tell. All right, here we go, fellas. It is the home leg up first here. Not thrilled about that one. We need to make sure we keep a goddamn clean sheet here, though. Come on. 10 minutes into this one. They've got a very good side around Madrid. They always do. It's just a given in career mode, really. Kimpembe, Delit, Lukaku, all these players. Nothing happening at the moment, which is fine by me. Nothing at all happening. Some substitutions. Now, Milik, who I looked at actually signing, has come on. We've got Bernard on the field. Isco comes on for them. Pavon. No! Grimaldo! Oh, Grimaldo makes it 1-0 for Real Madrid in the 81st minute. And now we have to go away to the Santiago Bernabeu and try getting a result. All right, lads. It is the away leg now. Come on, fellas. Oh, God. I'm a little bit nervous. We have 1-0 down here. We need an away goal. No questions asked. Come on. Come on. If they score, we're in a big hole. We will be in a deep hole if they score. Williams gets us a goal here. William gets us a goal. 
Come on, a second goal for us would be huge. What are you doing taking Jovic off? That's not what we want. Oh, God, I'm nervous. Williams! Williams makes it 2-0! Oh, my God! We're going through to the final! Yes! We are going through to the Champions League final! Why have we been so good in the away legs? Oh, my God! Anarchy Williams, I love you. I could kiss you. Yes! I don't think I've ever versed Bayer Leverkusen in a Champions League final before, but there is a first time for everything, and that time is going to be now. Cardiff City taking on Bayer Leverkusen in the 2024 Champions League final. They took down Napoli 2-1 on aggregate. We took down Real Bloody Madrid 2-1 on aggregate, but... Very interested to see how we go. Hopefully, we can take them down. Taking a look around the other tournaments, Barcelona defeated PSG to win the Europa League final. I mean, that could easily have been the Champions League final. Really bad news as well. In the Premier League, we have finished in sixth position. Two points away from third place, Everton. So... Oh, that top four race, extremely, extremely tight, all the way down to probably eighth place Man City. So if we don't win today, we're going to have to wait until season number eight. Liverpool do win the league, however, and the relegated sides are Preston, Leicester City, and Bournemouth. We did win the Community Shield over Chelsea at the start of the season, however, 2-1. Manchester United took down Newcastle United to win the FA Cup. And Man City took down Rotherham, of all clubs, to win the Carabao Cup. So we're going to take a look at our squad report at the end of this sixth season, hoping... It's the last time, hoping we can take down Leverkusen today and win the Champions League final. The bad news, however, Skriniar, oh, it's just not been his season. He is suspended for the final here, which is a massive blow. Juan Foyth will come in at the centre-back spot. Hopefully, Leverkusen don't have a crazy good squad. Otherwise, we might be in a little bit of strife. But I've had a great amount of fun so far doing this rebuild with Leicester. Hopefully, this is the final chapter. Hopefully, we take them down, and hopefully, we become champions of Europe. But we're about to find out. Cardiff City versus Leverkusen. Let's get into it. Clubs unlikely to find themselves in this position. Can we take down Leverkusen and get Europe's crowning glory? Let's find out. Bailey, that's a heavy touch, but now they find themselves in a good position here. Leverkusen, get to it. What a save, Strakosha. The follow up. What kind of defense is this? Oh my god. Leverkusen have taken the damn lead four minutes into this one. That is so bad. That through ball, it felt like there was nothing I could do. They played it through. Bailey just skinned us for pace. It was a great save from Strakosha. But the rebound, it fell straight to Brandt. And that's the worst possible start. 1-0 Leverkusen. What are you doing there, Strakosha? Come on, lads. We're trying to get a quick equalizer here. Raheem Sterling bolting through he's gonna hit that one it's saved oh we couldn't get the rebound bro why the fuck are they playing like barcelona the fuck is with this fucking game that's inconsistent fuck off ah oh, lauren's going through here we're playing like shit and we should be 2-0 down there this game is pissing me off probably the most frustrating half of fifa i have ever fucking played i feel like putting my fist through the desk this is great content Come on, Jovic going through. Neves feeding it through to Ben Chilwell. The stroke of half time. Can we get an equalizer? Jovic, header. There it is. Just as I go crazy about the game. 
and start raging. We find ourselves an equaliser. I wanted to go celebrate with Ben Chilwell. It was a beautiful cross, but we have equalised things here. Oh, I'm sorry about losing my head before, lads, but honestly, that was the most frustrating first half of football. And somehow, with one of the last kicks of the half, we have been able to equalise. Beautiful cross there. Jovic unmarked, and he did well to find the back of the net with the header. They're on the attack here. Come on, let's not go back behind after just taking and equalising things. That one goes out here to Evander. I'm pushing up with Neves. Bakayoko going there. Finesse. Oh, my God. That one fell straight to them, but we've had a little bit of luck on our side with the ball going straight to bloody Strakosha. Here we go. Look at that run. Get there, Inaki Williams. He's got pace for days. Williams. Oh, that's a terribly timed shot. I tried to green time it, but I hit that one terribly. Oh, Bailey. Turned the defender. Goes in there. Cleared away. Good stuff. Flick him over. Oh, we might still be in here, though. This is a good opportunity. And Kunku got a little head start with the pace. Falls right back to him. Feed it through. Come on, Williams. Don't stuff it up this time. We're going to go back post. And Kunku! I thought we were going to stuff that up at some point. But Nkunku has made it 2-1. I don't know why I accidentally did the no disrespect celebration because we should be going absolutely crazy here. Great counter-attacking goal. I probably should have hit it with Williams, but we squared it, and it worked out. 2-1, Carter City. Yes. Chilwell going to Jovic. Ball being passed around here, and Kunku. Williams going back, and Kunku. Back to Williams. Williams hits it. Williams at the near post. Surely that's going to be the goal to send the Champions League title to Cardiff. Anaki Williams, what a pickup he has been for us. Great signing from United, and he might have just put the cherry on top of the Champions League title. Look at this beautiful ball back to him. Touch, finesse, beaten here at Deki, and that's 3 1 Cardiff. They're on the attack here, Leverkusen. They have a shot. Back here, Yoko. Whew, that just sums up the second half for them. Into stoppage time here. Leverkusen, not many opportunities left for them. They're trying to push back for a goal here, but it looks like it's only going to be a consolation goal. There it is, chested away. And surely that is going to be the end of it. There it is, Cardiff City, champions of Europe. I was very, very worried at the start of that game, but we had a massive, massive second half and take down the German outfit. Lads, if you enjoyed this rebuild with Cardiff City, make sure you leave a like on the video. Make sure you bloody Scorpion kick that subscribe button down below if you are new around here. But most importantly, I hope you have a fantastic day. And titles, enjoy the title celebrations. It has been Jared HD here. I am out. Peace. I'll get the